savage sort of Conan, written by Jerry Duggan, art by Ron Garney. Uh, I was reviewing each issue as it came out. And after five issues, we have the end of this opening story arc called The Cult of Kogathun, written by Jerry Duggan. Uh, so this last issue written by Jerry Duggan, and then uh, the next story arc is going to be written by Meredith Finch, who I'm usually not a big fan of, so I'm not looking too much forward to that. But nevertheless, I thought this opening story arc was pretty fun. Not as good as uh, Jason Aaron's Conan the Barbarian is, though. That book is fantastic. But uh, not a bad story arc in here. Not too bad. Let's dive into the story in this issue. I'm going to break down the entire story for you so you can all enjoy it. When our book opens up, Conan is on the sea and apparently he is the lone survivor of a sea battle and looks like he is eating a shark and that is how he is surviving and uh, he's sort of struggling to be in the ocean and all of a sudden a pirate ship comes by and they bring Conan aboard and they are going to uh, treat Conan as a slave and sell the Conan when they get to shore along with all the other slaves they have. So they throw Conan below deck where he is eating a whole bunch of gruel and not being treated very well. And Conan kind of makes a friend with this guy, Suddy. And they are chained together, so they can't really be separated right now. And one of the guards, he doesn't like Conan's talking, so he smacks Conan with this club. Conan kind of stops him. Conan demands to speak to the captain, but this guard is having none of it. And uh, Conan sort of beats this guard up, so it's punching him. And uh, Conan is like, uh, undo these chains, let me go. And the guy's like, I don't have the key. So then Conan is basically saying that, uh, you have a small bone I can use to pick the lock. So he breaks this guy's hand and he uses like his finger and he's able to sort of pick the lock and get free. Conan heads to the surface of the ship, he busts through, he fights like everybody on board through some badass action sequences with some pretty interesting artwork here. Conan, he's continuing to navigate his way through the ship and all of a sudden he comes across some sort of beast and Conan yells Krum, which is like the name of his god, and this beast is some sort of serpent man, half man, half serpent. Conan kills this thing, he stabs it in the eye, and this thing is dead. And as Conan is leaving, he sees an ornate chest. This chest that is like, uh, wrapped, that looks very fancy, so Conan's not gonna pass this up. He brings this chest, he fights everyone on board, and, uh, him, he's still, he's still chained up to that guy, Suddy. So, the two of them, they jump overboard, Conan gets on a small, like, dinghy ship, and they, uh, float to shore and now they're on shore they him and Suddy are alive and this Suddy is trying to open this ornate chest Conan pushes him aside he rips sort of the binds that are keeping this chest closed and inside the chest it's not jewels it just appears to be sand and we're nothing here but worthless sand and then all of a sudden Conan starts tripping something in this this uh, chest activates something in Conan and his third eye apparently gets activated and Conan gets this weird trippy vision. He sees a map to a glorious treasure, a vision of him meeting a beautiful and mysterious adventurer and then he's gonna cross swords with a new enemy who looks very scary indeed and that is how this issue ends. So that was issue one, uh, let's dive into issue two now. So Conan and the Suddy are talking and they see all these weird trees, but they're not actual trees. They're trees made out of like all these grotesque dead bodies. So Conan hears a noise and he yells, show yourself. And then some people start talking back and then Conan says, Krom, which is like his God. You know, he's sort of saying it as like an expression in, in this case. And then uh, these guys are like, I've heard of that God. We ate him. He was that one that sobbed like a child, or am I misremembering? And then you see these crazy guys, they, they've like done some weird stuff to their head, and they made themselves look all demon-like or something, and Conan starts laughing. And uh, these bad new, bad new bad guys are like, you dare to laugh? Then Conan sort of uh, grabs some bodies off these trees, and he starts whacking them and attacking them with these dead bodies. And then Conan's like, why lie about Krom? about, you know, like, eating my god. <laughs> and then uh, these bad guys are like, we drink fear, but you had none. Forgive me. 
And then Conan's like, my forgiveness is irrelevant. Go ask Krom for forgiveness. <laughs> so this is like a really fun moment that I really liked in this book. So Conan eventually finds an ax and he cuts this chain that is sort of uh, keeping Suddy and him together. And Conan's like, you're free to go your own way if you want. But this Suddy decides that he is going to uh, stick with Conan. So Conan is on his way. He's trying to find this map, and uh, they're going to run into this Koga Thun, potentially this powerful wizard character that everybody in the town seems to be enslaved to. They're approaching the town, and uh, these guards don't want to let them in, but uh, Sadi is pretending that he has Conan as a slave, and he's there to sell him. And uh, they're like, okay, they buy this story. So they allow Conan and Sadi in, and then Conan and Sadi go looking for this library, and Conan Conan believes he's found it because he's looking for this particular scroll that would tie to this map that he had this envision of last issue. Then he runs into this new girl. Her name is Mene, keeper of the library. Conan explains that he wants this particular scroll, this particular tome to find this map that would potentially lead to this treasure. And this girl is all of a sudden interested in this because this Kogathon, who's like the leader, the wizard in this town, he's after this ancient horde that apparently contains the world's most powerful treasure, and this map might lead it to that. And, uh, you know, she wants this Kogathon out of her town, and if it means giving Kogathon this treasure, then so be it. But she's willing to work with them to, uh, you know, help uh, make ends meet to find this treasure all of a sudden there's like a knock at the door of this uh, library she goes to answer the door and then all of a sudden uh, these bad guys once again they're there and they're questioning her and they say that Komathun has requires her presence and uh, that is where this issue ends with Conan and Sadi on the other side of this door watching this interaction go down now moving over to issue three of Conan he's looking for this treasure from this map that was imprinted in his mind. And him and this guy, Sadi, which he met on this slave ship, as well as this girl, Menes, who is uh, the librarian in town. They are all working together to find this treasure. And eventually a fog takes over this part of the city. And this is some sort of magical fog. And it is uh, put out there by this wizard called Koga Thun. And this Kogathon has used this spell that will bring whoever the map holder is, in this case it's Conan, and it will bring Conan to him. So they're in this sort of weird uh, magical portal world for just a moment, and Kogathon is trying to extract from Conan the location of this treasure from this, this map that's in his mind. So we have couple of trippy scenes with this Kogathon, this fan, this wizard, sort of using his powers to try and uh, get at Conan. But eventually, this girl Menes, the, libra the librarian, she saves Conan, and they all manage to get out of this this magic uh, little portal world for a bit, and they manage to escape. But before they do, Kogathon has this sort of snake, and it manages to bite that sutty guy that Conan is hooked up with for now. So uh, maybe something will come with that, with this snake character attacking this Sadi. And as the issue goes on, they make their way into these like ancient catacombs, and they are confronting all these horrific looking monster zombies. And that is how issue three ends. And then going over to issue four now, Sadi, Menes, and Conan, they're all underground in this labyrinth looking for this map. They are continuing to fight all these undead zombie skeleton creatures. And this Sadi guy, he got bit by this snake from Kogathun last issue. And this snake, the venom in it is sort of like slowly taking over Sadi. So Conan, Sadi, and Menes, they're in this underground labyrinth and they're hunting for this map, and they're fighting this undead army, these forces of Kogathon. They are uh, managed to fight a whole bunch of them off. But the venom in Sadi's arm sort of starts taking over him a little bit. Conan wants to decapitate Sadi's arm and sort of stop the venom from spreading, but Sadi sort of uh, says he doesn't want to do this. And it was the wrong choice because uh, Sadi starts being completely taken over and Kogathon starts being able to see through Sadi's eyes and take over his body. And Conan is eventually forced to kill this Sadi. However, 
Kogathun, even through death, can take over Sudi and take over and become like a zombified Sudi, and he continues to fight Conan that way. And now, jumping over to issue 5, the last issue in this Kogathun storyline. So Conan, he's looking for this map of treasure in these catacombs with, you know, Suddy and Menes. So Suddy continues to be, you know, taken over by Kogathun. He's coming back from the dead. Conan has to kill Suddy again, and he chops Suddy's head off. Obviously, Conan feels very bad about this. Now, before Suddy died, I guess he managed to like scratch Conan or something, and somehow the venom that was in Suddy made its way into Conan's veins, and Conan would soon be taken over by Kogathun as well. So Conan and Manes, they are continuing to search for this treasure, trying to seek it out. Looks like they finally got to the treasure. And you know, Conan, he's expecting, you know, jewels and all sorts of stuff like that. But instead, it's just scrolls of lessons and charts and powerful magic. So that is what Kogathun wants. Kogathun appears, you know, he wants this powerful magic that was in these scrolls. This is what the treasure was all along. Now, uh, Conan goes to attack Kogathun. He tells Menes to torch those scrolls that Koga wants, but Menes reveals that her family has been held captive by Kogathun this whole time. So she's kind of, in a way, been a prisoner of Kogathun and been working for Kogathun this entire time, sort of unwillingly, but you know, she is sort of aligned with Kogathun now and she's not going to torch those scrolls. So she's sort of betraying Conan a little bit here. Conan fights Kogathun. Koga wants Conan to kneel to him. Conan says, I kneel to no one. They fight some more. Kogathun has this poisonous snake that he wants to bite into Conan. But then this Menes, she has a change of heart and she tries to save Conan and sort of make up for betraying him. She jumps in the way of this deadly snake. She gets bitten by the snake herself and she's dying. Conan vows to sort of avenge her. Conan continues brutally fighting everybody. He's fighting Kogathun, beating the shit out of Kogathun, smashing and smashing him. Eventually his head gets got gets cut off. Conan kicks the severed head of Kogathun, finally destroying him. Now it's explained by Conan killing Kogathun. This venom cancer that was in his body sort of, I guess, was cut out. And I guess maybe because Kogathun's dead, the uh, venom in his body won't turn Conan into a zombie now. And uh, the venom has sort of died out, so Conan is now free of potentially Kogathun's influence taking him over. So Conan, being slightly victorious now, he rides into the street, holding the head of Kogathun, and tells the slaves in the city that Kogathun is dead, and it's time to now slay your masters and seize your destiny. And Conan rides off into the distance, and the slaves begin to shake off their oppressors and gain their inevitable freedom. And that is how the storyline ends. And overall, I thought this was a pretty interesting, fun story arc. You know, you had this wizard, you had these new friends. In the end, it's kind of a self-contained story, but I mean, lots of good action here. Lots of good Conan moments. I had a pretty good time with this with this storyline. I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10. Not too bad. Not too excited for Meredith Finch, but I guess we should give her a shot and see how it goes. But yeah, I had a good time with the Savage Sword of Conan.